Dame Gaspadai, meine Damen und Herren, willkommen. Welcome to the main event of the evening, presented by Sauerland Event and Don King Productions in association with the Kentaro Group. This is it, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA. Heavyweight Championship of the World. Das ist die Boxweltmeisterschaft im Schwergewicht, zwölf Runden. FEA President Willibald Palatine, WBA President Gilberto Mendoza, WBA Supervisor de España Bartolome Tarabla. The three judges at ringside scoring this bout will be from Italy, Pierluigi Popi, from Panama, Guillermo Perez, and from Sweden, Mikael Hook, and inside the ring, the man in charge of the action at the bell, referee from Puerto Rico, Luis Pabon. And now, for the sold out thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, from Zurich, Switzerland, uh, let's get her ready to rumble! Fighting out of the red corner, De Rota Eka, wearing red, official weight, 97.2 kilos. This Olympic medalist has a professional record consisting of 53 fights, 42 victories, including 27 knockouts with five world titles. From Atlanta, Georgia, USA, the challenger, the herausforderer, Funkmaliga Weltmeister, five-time world champion, former undisputed cruiserweight, and four-time heavyweight champion of the world, the legend, the legenda, the warrior, Evander, Real deal, holy field. In the blau and echo, the blue corner, wearing blue, official weight, 141 kilos. Professional record, 51 fights. 49 victories, including 34 knockouts. From St. Petersburg, Russia, the Zweimal Liga Weltmeister im Schwergewicht, the reigning, defending, two-time WBA heavyweight champion of the world from Russia with love, the Russian giant, Damir Gasparai Nikolai Niko. Well, the crowd likes Valuev, but they love Evander Holofield, okay, Al. Fascinating and enthusiastic Rudolf reaction. Eighteen years since Evander Holyfield first won the heavyweight title, and here he is again. And Al, you picked it up. We should mention Tommy Brooks back in his corner. Had been away for a while. Brooks has trained Mike Tyson many others. But back when Holofield was with Duba Boxing, now he's got a familiar face back with him. He's trained, changed trainers rapidly, though, throughout his career. Valuev coming forward. Watch that jab and see if Evander can get around it. That's a key. Look how long it is. Actually, the reach is only seven-inch difference, but that's plenty, Al. Every time you see Valua fight, and we mentioned, you know, four decisions in his last four fights, not as if he walks in and knocks people out, but the sheer size in the ring of him is just daunting. Yeah, how do you dissuade him? Evander's got to be busy. He's got to let his hands go and win enough rounds. And you mentioned, and already we see evidence of it, Valua is not a fighter who presses the the pace a lot so in a way he gives Holyfield a chance to set and figure out how he's going to attack this mountain good point and uh, absolutely not having to expend a lot of energy as the 46 year old you know, I know Evander's 
been in superb shape a lot. It's hard to question that typically for him. He's a marvel at 46. Look mm -hmm. at him. But he does fight in spurts. There's the hook by Holyfield. There's a punch that will land against Valuev. I think it's the Holyfield hook. But if he throws it with too much abandon, he leaves himself open to get hit with the counter right hand. So it's kind of a tricky deal for Holyfield in terms of really throwing that punch a lot. What do you think Valuev is waiting for, Al? I don't know. The jab of Valuev should be something he uses very much in this fight. Uh, it, it, Holyfield can be hit with that punch. Valuev tries to throw, him, throw that right hand to the body and then shoves Holyfield back. But Valuev very awkward. Two minutes into this fight, uh, hasn't landed much of well, anything. We, we haven't seen many punches thrown, period, yet in this fight. I mean, almost nothing. Holyfield, I don't know if he's thrown more than two punches. And Valuev, not too many more. Overhand right by Holyfield. Yeah, that landed. Now he's inside, missing. Valuev tries to counter with the right, but he was very slow with it. And even the 46-year-old could get out of the way. And Evander's been hard to miss lately, Al. Yeah, they, they defensive. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Nick. Defensive liabilities have come more to the forefront in the last couple of years for Evander Holyfield, that's for sure. And uh, as you said, a little very slow with that right hand. So just by nature of a couple of punches that Holyfield has landed, he might have won himself the first round by default. Boy, does he need him. Ballou just trying to dial in and figure out Evander. He gets hit with a counter left hand. And I agree with you, Al. That was Evander Holyfield's round. Well, they say Willie Pep won, won a couple of rounds by throwing no punches. <laughs> Evander Holyfield won that one by throwing about six. <laughs> there you go. You don't normally have that much give and take conversation in the Yeah, corner. I'm amazed that the fighter, Nikolai Valuev, commenting back to his trainer. Yeah, that was that was a virtual discussion there. He's in the middle of the ring and towering over everybody. Look at this sellout house in Zurich, Switzerland. Evander Holyfield, four-time heavyweight champion, trying to become the oldest man to win that title. George Foreman did it at age 45. The 46-year-old arguably took that first round on our cards anyway. Nick Charles with Al Bernstein. This main event from Zurich, Switzerland, Evander Holyfield, the challenger, 14-month layoff. We thought he was finished 14 months ago, but nobody can tell Evander that except himself. <laughs> That's well put. You know, the uppercut for Valuev is probably going to be the most important punch of this fight, I believe, because and he almost tried to throw it. Yeah, Holyfield tends to bend in. We saw how effective that was in the clips we saw of his fight against Owen Beck and also Monty Barrett. And I thought, I think for Holyfield, the key is getting around Valuev's jab, but as you said, Al, he's not throwing it. Exactly. That that could be a punch also, in addition to that uppercut, that would, would be uh, difficult for Holyfield, but not much happening from Valuev in that regard. Well, you would think that the champion wouldn't just be following around like this and not even really cutting the ring off and not throwing any shots. He's going to lose his title this way. Uh, I would uh, expect him to pump up the volume offensively. Yeah, and you have a 46-year-old man in front of you who has had uh, yeah. some issues in, in recent fights. There's that uppercut that Valuev has tries. So you would think you'd want to pressure him and make him fight, make him fight. the full three minutes. Crowd calling for more action. Valuev in the blue, Holofield all in red. There's the hook and there's the infighting and there's the clinching. You know, I mentioned earlier that I thought the hook might be there for Holyfield. It's there in a surprisingly easy way early in this fight. Can he hurt um, Valuev with it? I don't know, but if he keeps landing it, it's going to keep scoring points. 
Yeah, he got inside. You know, he's not going to walk down the Russian, but he's got to get inside and do a little work because he, the reach is a mismatch. The height and Baluaf, again, just pawing with the jab, should be drilling it and controlling distance, controlling this fight that way. This is probably the first time many of the American fans that are watching this broadcast the first time they've seen Valuev. He's not been shown that much in the United States. Uh, and if you're watching him for the first time, this is not Valuev at his best. When he's at his best, he's a technician throwing more punches. You saw in those highlight reels. Yeah. This is the Valuev that is the kind that gives a fighter like Evander Holyfield a chance to win this fight. I agree with you. I mean, the way he went after Monty Barrett, I mean, he just gave away two rounds for Lua did. Absolutely. Sold out house in Zurich, Switzerland. Appreciative, but wanting beautiful more. Work, There's Tommy man. Brooks. I feel Boston. Fantastic, man. Hey, that's beautiful work. I got you up, man. That was excellent. That was excellent. You hey, look. The plans. Stay with, stay with just what you're doing, boss. Working beautiful, man. Now, remember now, he's bringing his left hand back low, so you can time that right hand. But once you throw that right hand, throw something behind it. Yeah. Beautiful you're work. Asking, man. You're sticking with a plan. Beautiful work. Keep scoring points, honey. Oh, God. Hey, your head's ahead. Yeah, the plan is, uh, you know, it's a sparring, so I'm hitting the speed. I'm hitting the bag because nothing's coming back. So he hasn't been pressed, uh, Holofield, to change anything, Al. Yeah, and there, there is no offense coming from Valuev. Clearly, Valuev, from his perspective, needs to throw, start throwing well, some. I don't get it. I just don't get it. You know, Holofield's not within range now. That's clear. He's just using the ring. and <laughs> Of course, when you're seven feet tall, <laughs> a guy should almost <laughs> always be in the range, shouldn't he? Right. With about an 82-foot reach. <laughs> <laughs> Now Valua trying to close the gap a little bit. Holofield, first punch he's thrown this round. It didn't land. Valua almost looks like he's waiting to counter. Now he tries to let his hands go a little bit. But it's frustrating to watch this giant. You know, the other, the other interesting thing is, and here's Holyfield at age 46 giving consistent lateral movement to Valua, and that seems to be an issue for uh, Nikolai and Holyfield all he needs to do is just give him that uh, lateral movement and occasionally throw some punches right now So they up with the jab Single shots from him if at all nothing on his punches either I know he's a big man he could get a little leverage and punch it down on you could Take it out of you a little bit, but he hasn't thrown one punch with conviction, Al, the champion. Very disappointing here in the third round of a scheduled 12-round championship fight. And it's not as if Holyfield has been super active either, but what he has done is done things like that. Picked his shots, thrown the right hand that Tommy Brooks asked for over the low left of Valuev. There's been an occasional left hook mixed in as well by Holyfield. Gosh, the crowd in Switzerland just loving every movement, any kind of offensive flicker from Evander Holyfield. Well, honestly, who among them, you know, I'm sure there's some, there are Valua fans, and clearly he's a, a fighter with uh, uh, support in Europe, but Evander Holyfield at age 46 to them is quite a story. That's the emotional attachment. Sure. I agree, Al. Oh, boy, this is a round neither guy has done, I think. I would have it 9-9. Nine, nine. Well, I, but I'd give can't. it to Holyfield because he landed a couple of punches. Valuev has landed nothing. So you almost have to give Holyfield a round from the couple of punches that he landed unless something changes yeah. here in the interim. It's a 10-point must, as you all know, unified rules of boxing. You could make it an even round, certainly. 9-9, <laughs> nine, nine, I don't know. That was cool. Uh, well, it's impossible. <laughs> Although maybe <laughs> accurate. <laughs> that was a body punch by Holyfield. I have seldom seen a three-round period, even in the heavyweight division, in yes. which both heavyweights have thrown such few number of punches. And we've had a few fights this year, like the Abragamov-Klitschko fight and a few other heavyweight fights that have been very low in action. 
This one, though, is so far down the totem pole. Tired and tedious so far. Crowd in Zurich, though, happy to be ringside. Or in the rafters watching this one. Uh, the same message. Here we see it, Al. There's the right hand by Holyfield. He kind of cranks the left hook off the chest of Valua. That was the one moment, literally, of that round that had any action in it. So I don't know if that's enough for someone to give Evander Holyfield the round, but this gentleman, the first Russian to win any version of the World Heavyweight Championship, yes, um, not covering himself with glory so far. You know, just from body language in the corner of Valua, they want him to, it's like, take these shots on the gloves and forearms, but why shouldn't he just be first? Now he's trying, flicks the jab. He's got Holofield in the corner and easily lets Holofield dictate, you know, the pace and range of this fight, Al. And Baluev could be doing all of that with his jab. Controlling the pace, the range, and the fight. We he kept the Vander at the end of it. We mentioned uh, at the outset of this broadcast that how Valuev throws the jab in the first couple of rounds will give us an indication of how he's going to fight. If he was throwing it with conviction, it would show us that he, the fight's going to be that way. He's not done it that way. Gee, he's sleepwalking. Every jab is thrown tentatively without any conviction, and that's why nothing's coming from him in this fight. And Holofield isn't showing me he could fight. No. He's, he's showing me he's, he, he isn't. He's not throwing many punches at all, if any. He just throws enough to land an occasional big punch. In this round, I don't think Evander's thrown a punch yet. A little flurry inside. He'll go inside, single, maybe two shots. Balua can't find him with a range finder of a jab. There, Balua doubles a jab, but nothing on that right hand. Balua is not an inside fighter. He'll hold whenever the fighter's inside. He doesn't want to fight. And really, that's the place where he should be using that uppercut. Absolutely, Al. Referee Luis Cabone from Puerto Rico, the judges from Sweden, Italy, and Panama. And Holyfield does not want to use a lot of jabs because he's worried about being countered by the right hand. He's thrown literally almost no jabs in this fight, Holyfield. He, right. And he hasn't had to fight fast. I, you know, I was saying, yeah, punch and move, punch and move. But with nothing coming at him, he's done just a little bit of work inside like that, and it's winning every round for him. And the intriguing thing is, it's the 46-year-old who's throwing more combinations, even though there are not too many. There's the uppercut by Valuev. That's the one punch that could spell disaster for Evander Holyfield. Al, I can't answer the question, but I could speculate I could just ask it is how can Balua think he's winning this fight, winning any rounds when he's so inactive? It's just, it's incomprehensible to me why he hasn't gotten going here in the fourth round. And, it, and the, the actual volume of punches is so low. It's not as if he's just missing. It's that there have been so few of them. And it'd be hard pressed to give him this round, Balua, because Holyfield had a couple of effective moments. I don't think he's thrown 20 punches around and landed five. And I've got Holofield winning every round. You, Al? I would agree. There might have, there was one closer round, but... There's the open blow. It's a free shot for Evander. And the interesting thing is that hook didn't move Valuev at all. Didn't even move him. It barely moved his head. And yet, still, it lands, though. And Evander does the right thing after that stuff. You know, he's inside, now he'll pin yep. his head to uh, Valuev's chest and force him to clinch. A couple of jabs thrown by Valuev there, but, um, you know, and that's as close as he's come to landing a really good jab in that sequence right there. But for the most part, that punch has been non-existent, and Holyfield's been able to counter him from time to time. The try at the uppercut by Valuev, 
And that's an, that was an important Book. attempt on his part, but it, it, all that got him in return was a counter left hook. And you know, Al, I was talking about Balua being not just a hulking giant. He looks absolutely lumbering in this fight. He hadn't taken one half step back to break a clinch, maybe. And when Holofield's in fight, in, in sight and in, in, in inside, trying to shorten up and nail him. He's just following him around totally ineffectively, not making the fight at all. The things that we've seen from time to time from Valuev in other fights that make him a little bit more of a ring technician, of course, are absolutely absent here tonight. Wow, the crowd is all of Ander. One of the problems, even early on, one of the problems with Valuev's lack of activity is, and this might be going way, way, way beyond where any analyst should go in round four, but I'll do it anyway, round five. It me what he's doing is devaluing the little bit that Holyfield's doing because he's being so uh, inactive that if Holyfield went on to win a decision just like this over the course of 12 oh, rounds, boy. Valuev would devalue it to the point where people, people wouldn't be able to give a 46-year-old credit for the that's win. A, that's a wonderful observation, Al. I agree with you. It would be to the point, like, who wants to see this guy? He really didn't win. And that's a that's a big issue because this, you know, let's face it. This is all about, this is an entrepreneurial sport, all about do you want to see somebody fight? And uh, now, of course, Holyfield can fix that himself by being more active. And Looks he's like got, he's trying to yeah. come to the champion. And he's got seven rounds to do that. So he can fix that problem if he is real active and Start throwing great combinations. Well, Al, it looks like, I, I, look, through five, if Holofield wins this round, Baluev is also setting himself up to where he's going to have to knock Holofield out. Hook lands by Holofield. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, if you're down in the hole 50 to 45, you're going you're gonna to need to sweep the rest of the fight or knock him out. Now, one of the small dangers here is Holyfield's becoming, as we go on, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more bold in the chances he's taking. His danger is walking into one of those uppercuts or one of those straight right hands at some point uh, when he does that. But he's still pretty measured, Holyfield, in terms of his attack, but still doing more than Valua. It's the only thing I could see in terms of a fight plan for the champion that he's trying to sucker this guy into walking into an uppercut. It's the only, yeah. only thing rationale I could see for Valuez's lack of activity. Ten seconds. Makes no sense. And with that flurry before, Holofield may have won this round as well yep. and been up 50 to 45, setting up a, the, the point of almost diminishing return for this man, the champion. Where if he doesn't win the next seven rounds, would escape with a draw if he won six of them. If not, he'd have to knock out this man. Excellent work. Who hasn't been stopped Great since work. James Tony. Like hey, look, great. if you want to go stationary, now's the time to do it. But look, you got to counter those. You just can't just can't catch now. You got to throw something back, all right? More than more. More than more. You're getting a little bit anxious, man. But look, if you're going to go stationary now, if you, if you got to throw something, and then you got to step. Don't stand there, OK? Take some big breath, Holy, next to the hole. But you're working great just like you're working, boss. Now, please. Sixth round, coming up. That was the fifth round. I got Brilliant this corner thing, work man. by Tommy Brooks. Brilliant corner work because he's telling Holyfield now, as you heard, if you want to set down on those punches, do it. But please, you must step if you're going to do it. You can't just stay in his wheelhouse and accept the punch. They're acknowledging that it, it, he could do more. But I love the caution that Tommy Brooks threw his way. Let's see if Evander does do that. I mean, I don't want him to work as, or he doesn't want to move as much, who knows? He's been effective enough because of Valuev's uh, lack of not only effectiveness, but any action. Now inside, as he wraps the champion with shots to the body, man, Valuev, Never win a bodybuilding contest, but he looks soft and Holofield is ripped as usual, but outweighed by nearly 100 pounds. You know, Valuev once outweighed a guy by 159 pounds, Al. Wow. <laughs> you know, you get the impression that their intention, Tommy Brooks and the Holyfield camp, 
was to at some point be a little bit more stationary and then be more aggressive. They felt maybe taking this to a certain point in this fight, and they're already telling him, look, you can start doing that a little bit here in round six, but Holyfield not feeling, feeling comfortable enough to do it, so he's continued the movement. But Al, for Holyfield to be in the luxurious spot, oh, yeah. not, not having to go to plan B, yeah. but saying, hey, if I want to go to plan B, <laughs> then I'll go inside, work inside, and negate Baluev's size, and here he's doing it. Baluev is like he's sleepwalking. Nikolai, and I, you know what, I've been at this for many, many years, and I think my reputation is one of being a pretty fair-minded uh, and not um, painting pictures black and white. Nikolai Valuev's performance in this fight is one of the worst I've ever seen. It's head-scratching. He's one of the worst I've ever seen in any division by any fighter. Yeah, how can this man be a champion? It's, it's because, atrocious. And, you know, I, give Evander Holyfield credit. He's fighting a smart fight. He's doing just enough what he needs to do to, to win these rounds. But this is a dreadful performance by Valuev. And he'll have to, he might score a one-punch knockout. He might turn it around in these last second half of this fight. But right now, it's dreadful. Like Valuev doesn't want to fight. He doesn't know how to fight. And we saw in those clips against uh, Boxer. Now there he puts together a nice combination, Valuev. He missed, but that's just what he should be doing. Let his hands go. It's not as if he has never fought well. Holofield now uh, catches a jab. Now Valuev starting to get a little bit of rhythm to what he does at least. I don't know, you know, you can try to figure out a guy's moves, but I don't think Holofield has given you such ridiculously tough looks. Yeah, there's lateral movement, but it's not absurdly quick lateral movement. Now, see, it's like, hey, referee saved me. Not like I'm going to tear this guy's head off. Mm -hmm. Luis Pavon of uh, Puerto Rico jumping in. Crowd sort of, echo, sort of echoing the inaction that uh, I'm sure you, you're feeling and seeing as we are. Come on, this guy doesn't need a demonstration. He needs a bull whip, Al. Well, you can hear the urgency in his corner as they try to get him to do a little bit more of this, at least throw punches. Nice short right hand, takes a left hook in, in response, and a couple of left hooks in response. And there's the jab of Valuev, which we have seen so little of, and... Uh, How can you really give uh, Valuev a round, Al, or no, can you? No, you might make the last maybe, round Maybe, maybe five to one. You yeah, might make five, it, yeah. yeah, you might make it five to one, or the last round even, even but that's about as far as you can go. Al, you know, Holofield, this, as you you really nailed it, Al. Even in, in winning this fight, uh, he's looked so mediocre. He's looked almost uh, uh, just moving in the way he did, trying to get around the jab and just caving in and falling on Valuev's chest, knowing that nothing's coming back. I mean, it's not he, like he's done anything great. No, he's doing what he needs to do. and He's landed. He's shown us, uh, ironically, he's shown us exactly what he has in other fights, even like the Abragamov in recent times, flashes of good work you know combination uh, Al, I think you're, and, Al, you're telling like it is you're being kind I don't well, see, I just don't see just anything in there that yeah. would pose a, a challenge to a to a real heavyweight who I, came to fight I, and I say flashes because it's yes. only been flashes and it's only been because Valuev is not doing anything but nevertheless he's doing it you know he's doing enough to win these rounds that's for sure but not by much you know Valuev we talked about needing to keep Holofield the end of his jab. He hasn't at all been. He's got to start beating up this guy inside. And Holofield able to move, move leisurely. You know, he's 46 years old. His legs aren't at all what they used to be. He's never been a guy who's totally just bounced around the ring. There's a flurry from him. Kaluev landed a right hand briefly. It didn't do much good. Kaluev trying to double the jab. He's short with it with an 85-inch reach to 78 for Evander. Even for Valuev, who has had some performances in the past where he has been less 
active than some people would like him to be. Even for him, this one is an absurdly inactive performance in which he has just done almost nothing offensively. Now, in this round, Holyfield has not thrown that many punches either. There he lands a right and, a, and another right on the inside. Blueov had landed a couple of good right hands earlier in the round. You know, Holyfield at 46, out there. now he's getting pressed a little bit. Nice right hand from Blueov. Well, it's like uh, Holyfield wins his title, he could fight two months later because, uh, you know, this is, this is like a leisure league sparring session. It's like how to play a little keep away defense and an occasional flurry and, uh, you know, work on your legs for today. That's what we're going to do. We're going to put a big guy in there who's not doing anything. Just walking around. Yeah, and there are very few punches coming from Valua, so you don't have to worry too much. Even there, Valua just kind of walks away as if, okay, I don't have to punch right now. And he isn't as we close out the seventh. He's like shaking his head at the Holofield like, what? You didn't come to fight? Well, make him fight. Here we see the champion. Now that hook landed, but a right in return from Holofield. And then another right. Holofield, when he gets on the inside, understands. And there's the use of the head, which oh, yes. uh, many have accused of Vander Holofield of the past. Liberally. Uh, and uh, he knows how to do it when he's on the inside. And there you see the head kind of tucked underneath the chin. Yeah, Al, I agree. They let him get away. Sometimes they let him get away with it because of his status, the legendary status, I thought. A lot of head movement. Let's listen in. Hey, come on. Al, we all expected more. We know our viewers watching did. We know we did. Well, if not something well, we, dynamic from Baluev to send Holofield into retirement. Not playing favorites, but the man is arguably an 8-10-1 to 10 to 1 favorite. Well, here's the thing. If you take this completely in a vacuum and you say, okay, let's dissect it round by round. Vander Holofield doing just enough to win, landing some punches here and there. But if you take it in its total, yes, it, it has not created a, a super interesting fri prize fight. And more than that, Baluev, a man who has kind of, you know, was handed this title after he lost it in the ring. He's not acting like he wants to keep it. And there he finally throws some right hands. Finally, off of that jab, which is really, that was, that's his deal. Okay, there it is. That's what he should have been doing five rounds ago. And maybe maybe his plan was to let the 46-year-old Holyfield run around a little and then go after him, though I find oh, that hard to me believe. Me too. Giving away all those rounds. Yeah. Now he's got to knock him out. He's got that jab right hand over the top, and inside he's got the right uppercut, as you mentioned. Yeah, exactly. He's got, he's got two sequences that, if you just keep trying them over and over again, might work against this fighter, and yet he has not tried either of them very often. Olafield tries the jab right hand over the top from the champion. Now Valuev walking in, but not punching. And Holofield circles right. Well, it's all in degrees, but in some respects, things have at least heated up a little bit in this Absolutely. Round. I just I was going to say, it's probably... <laughs> Small degrees, yeah, but no, no, it's the, progress. <laughs> Halfway through the eighth is a 12-round title fight, and the man with the title, Nikolai Valuev, is playing catch-up. There are the exchange shots there. Holofield came back with a nice left hand. For one of the very few jabs that Evander has tried in this fight, that one did get through. Baluev walking, walking to the challenger, but not throwing much of anything. He's had his moments in this fight, that jab, in this round, I should say. You know, if you want to look at this from one perspective, the fact that 46-year-old Holyfield has had constant movement during the course of the eight rounds is something. But true, it's not exactly He's not Muhammad siege. Ali, Larry Holmes movement. It's yeah. just enough lateral movement to give Valuev some issues. Yeah, and it's not like he's had to run from this guy no. under pressure. He's not been pressured all night. Yeah, it's been movement that he dictated. Exactly. A little better round for Valuev. Yeah, this I might would, be uh, one that he's winning. I agree. You know, from a judge's perspective, yeah, 
it would just seem you're, you're human. You're looking at a champion. You're saying, how can a champion conceivably, against a guy not posing a lot of threats, how can I not give him one round? Do you know what I mean? I mean, you're, you're putting one round in the bank and you're on to scoring the next, and that's what you're supposed to do. But you're saying, how can this champion not win a single round on my card? Well, and in fact, he is winning this one. So he's landed more punches and done a little more. I gave it to him as well. Yeah. And I give it to this crowd, ringside in Switzerland, for applauding the They're action. actually uh, quite benevolent. Yeah. Yeah, I don't speak Russian now, but this guy's not telling them enough. It seems the same thing, like... Catch, catch shots and uh, counter. Here's the Valuev. Now they exchanged jabs, and actually that was one where Holyfield got in a little bit better. There's the jab of Valuev getting in. Punch that he has not landed very often. You know, Al, I'm, we're not taking those shots, but it looks like Valuev's shots, everyone that's landed flush, have had no effect on Evander. Nothing. I mean, this is a man 310 pounds hitting you. We're two-thirds of the way through this fight, and uh, it is interesting. Evander Holyfield has been allowed to basically fight at his own pace. Wow. Which is, we said at the beginning, this was the way in which Holyfield could ultimately win this fight. I thought the only way. Al. Yeah, and it's been the way it's transpired for him. Not good for boxing, slippage there. Left hook that just kind of pushed him off balance, but more a slip. Valuev gets hit with a counter. Good hook by Valuev. Yeah, but back comes Evander nicely. That was a great combination by Holyfield. That was the best action of the fight, in my opinion. Yep. Ah, oh, let him get mean, and then we'll have a fight. <laughs> I was going to say, at this point, to warn Valuev for any act of aggression seems, oh, I don't know, inappropriate. <laughs> wow. Valuev trying to get into his offense, he's jumping, trying to get on the balls of his feet a little bit. Holofield moving away, moving both ways. Valuev engages him with the jab, nothing behind it. This Holof fight, yeah, go ahead, Al. I'm sorry, Nick. This fight has been the ultimate in measured aggression. Oh, he uh, said it. I mean, it really has. <laughs> Holofield making the play now landing nothing but he's throwing the jab because the champion's throwing nothing and you know you you have to say this for Vander Holyfield the fact that he's moved to right he's moved to left he's done it in a way that has given Valuev some issues that strategically is a big part of what has worked for him but aiding and abetting him is Valuev who has not thrown many punches at all he threw his head it seemed last time Vander a few moments ago, Al complaining about a headbutt, it would seem, uh, to the right orbital bone area. Holofield not even catching and countering, because Valuev short. Now here comes the uh, counter assault from the champion. And of course, you, combination. you know, we have to remind ourselves, Vander Holofield has in general in life been more more productive as a counter puncher himself. Isn't that true? So that, that's when his style. we see when Valuev does throw some punches, Holyfield's able to counter them effectively for the most part. You know, I thought Evander's always been a vulnerable fighter. I thought the age in the ring wear would make him much more vulnerable in this fight. But oh, sure. Valuev hasn't exploited a thing in his favor. Not a thing. Not pressing him. Not even fighting in flurry. He's not fighting at all. Well, if you're landing some some right, some left hooks on the inside, able to land a little bit to the body. Holyfield was 214, Valuev 310 for this fight. Al, I'll give you a moment to digest your card and pick up your scoring. Here's the action uh, from that ninth round. You see Holyfield on the inside clubbing with the right. When Holyfield's on the inside, Valuev doesn't want to fight on the inside, so he simply holds, and it's Holyfield doing the majority of the work. A little short chopping right hand, but not very effective by Valuev. 
Always the Holyfield head kind of lurking in a dangerous position. And there's the jab of Holyfield, which we have seen sparingly in this fight, but when it has been used, it's very effective. And that sequence, emblematic, I think, of this fight. Neither man super effective, but a little bit better for Holyfield. That really uh, was this fight in microcosm right there. Uh, Al, I'm sorry. I'm doing this fight. We're all getting paid for it. And we're watching it. And I was anticipating so much more. But, wow, Evander, the point, he lacks sharpness to the point of looking amateurish at times. I know this is a big guy, but he walks in. He's not even seeing anything. He's walking in with his head down or turn, and how Belouf is not doing this. He uh, Belouf looks like he's a Russian amateur and not a professional heavyweight champion. Well, I, I use your yeah. word. It, this is a dreadful fight. Yeah, and I and I agree that it, with what you just said. I will say this for Holyfield: his technique's better than Belouf's at this juncture. It is. And and he and and when he throws those good combinations, they're thrown well. It's just a few and far between. See, and he'll rip a little body shot. He'll work a little on the inside. So. From that standpoint, Holyfield has been effective, but if Veluev has allowed him to do that. Al, back to your card, how do you have it through nine? I, you know, I have um, every round for Holyfield at one even and one, one. for Veluev. Couldn't argue with that. I know that. And you could make the case of two rounds for Velua out but, of the first. But nobody nine. could make the case for the champion winning this fight. I don't think so. Not at this juncture. So he would oh. apparently need a knockout. Nice right hand from Evander. And again, a counterpunch over the jab of Velua. And he shows no signs of hurting Velua, even with the big punches he's landing. But they are getting there, and they're the only punches that are getting there in this fight. And they take drug tests, you know, obviously after these fights, they better because it looks like Belouf's taking too many sleeping pills for this one. He looks terrible. And I know I'm hammering, chiseling home a point that everybody sees. It's clear cut. There's no denying. It's well, not that he's done anything to win this fight. He's done everything to lose it. And Evander's done just enough to win rounds. Just enough. This will not be one that Blue will press in his memory book, that's for sure. And at 35, uh, there's pressure on him as well, not just Holyfield at 46, because and with some recent losses. Al, you never, it's a guy you never want to see again when you see him fight this way. You know, it becomes like the circus act, the seven foot. 300 pound lumbering giant who doesn't belong in the ring with world class fighters. Well, and you know, he hasn't exactly, and the, the sad part for Valuev is he hasn't exactly been that before. He's had his No, I, I, I was expecting yeah, and exactly. hoping for so much more because right. I know this guy has some technical skills. Yeah, he does. And and we saw evidence of that in some of the, the highlights. And it's not to suggest he's been a world beater in every fight, but he's had some entertaining matches. Absolutely. And, and this has just been a not a good effort. You know, beating a guy looks impossible to beat, John Ruiz. He won a unanimous decision over him. Three knockdowns against Monty Barrett, who just fought Klitschko. Or I should say David Hay. Got to give the round to somebody. I'm glad I don't have to score this for a living. <laughs> Two rounds, boss. Two rounds, baby. You got that in you. I know you do. Tim, just keep moving. Don't stand stationary, man. Don't let it get a play. Yo, right here. Let's focus. Right here. Yo, right here. Okay. Two rounds, baby. This is yours. Give me two. Give me two. Two more rounds. Okay? You got this, boss. Don't stand stationary. Holy Field in the last he, he round, turned. taking a nice right yeah, hand by the Lua. They've now. been from time to time landing. But he lands his own as well, and then comes with the hook. And when there have been combinations in this fight, it's been a holy field. And against the, oh boy, that's his, uh, you know, he's hitched his wagon to this guy, invested a lot in him. Holyfield coming in blind with those shots. What you have to do against a seven footer, roll under him, it's hard. You don't want to have your chin hanging in the air, but. You know, I haven't seen one effective inside shot, certainly on a counter, from Belua all night. No, not at all. And if we're from Sauerland, we saw the frustration. Uh, he's looking at this, and uh, needless to say, his man, Belua, has uh, 
has been a huge disappointment to him as well. Now, Tommy Brooks clearly indicating to Holyfield, this is no time to get brave. This yeah. is no time to stand there and decide you're going to be uh, you're going to be a warrior. Fight a smart tactical fight. I, and what I'm about to say, believe me, could be distorted and painted into <laughs> a, a monstrous say uh, anyway. statement. However. <laughs> This is in some ways reminiscent of the way he fought Riddick Bowe in his second fight. Certainly not on that skill level, certainly not at the right pace, but it's an event of Holyfield who has thought through what he might be able to do in terms of technique and strategy. However, I emphasize, not even close to being on that skill level, but the Evander Holyfield, the warrior, which we've even seen in recent fights, he's putting in check to get a win. Man, Al, I, you know, I respect a lot of that, and what you say, I think you're on target. I, I just don't see anything in Holofield that suggests to me that he's going to be a wor that he's a true uh, world champion. It is not. And a, he's going to win yeah. the world championship tonight unless you're, Baluef you're gets lucky. You are correct. It's not a brilliant performance. It's an adequate performance, and it's 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 been an adequate performance has been enough tonight. But you're you're absolutely correct. And we'll wrap that up when we wait for the judges' verdict and talk more about perspective. And once we get it. But uh, Baluev has been comatose in this fight. Crowd yep. at the sellout crowd here in Switzerland, uh, cheering Holofield most of the night. And he has been the busier fighter, and he's controlled the pace, as uh, you had mentioned, alluding to the second bow fight, and been able to do the things he wants to do best. And it's been enough to win this fight. And even now, you look at, and you know, we, listen, I guess it's possible we're wrong. I guess it's possible. Baluev is winning some rounds. I don't know how. Can't be too many. But if we're right, uh, it's astonishing that Baluev is not being even a little bit aggressive to try and win some rounds here. We're in round 11. Absolutely. Or to knock him out. It's incomprehensible to me. Holofield hasn't landed a solid blow this round, but thanks to Baluev, he hasn't had to. And really, a couple of body shots by Holyfield, maybe one or two kind of overhand rights might be enough to win him this round. I don't know. He's just got to finish on his feet to win this, to win a fifth heavyweight world championship in our view. One round to go from Zurich, Switzerland. The WBA heavyweight title on the line. Hopefully that's the same in any language. They know that word. <laughs> Knockout. <laughs> because he doesn't even seem uh, bothered. He's, He's bewitched and bewildered. We know that. But is he bothered by just giving his title away? That's the way I look at it. It's the only way I can see it. He's giving the title on a platter to Evander Holyfield. I agree. He has pretty much gift wrapped it, and Evander Holyfield has been smart enough thus far and active enough thus far to accept that gift. We'll see if uh, Luev can snatch it back here in the final yeah. round. Al, I don't get it. You know, do you think he's been, as we said before, phased at all by a single shot from Holyfield that's hurt him? No. I could, I'm speaking for him. Why he won't come forward is just, it's got me in disbelief. If he hasn't been stunned, he hasn't had his bell rung, he hasn't been hurt, he doesn't feel threatened by Evander, just go for it, man. Holyfield last held a, a version of the heavyweight title back in the year 2000 with a win over John Ruiz after he had lost to Lewis. And there's Holyfield landing some big right hands. Doesn't hurt Valuev, but it scores. And Baluev, once Holofield backs off, not jumping on him. He's letting Evander go at his pace. Punch count is so low in this fight, even for heavyweights. And, and punches landed are atrocious. Yes. 
from Valuev's standpoint especially. Holyfield, ironically, may have may have landed a fairly high percentage of what he threw, interestingly. <laughs> Didn't throw that many, but he may have landed a fairly high percentage of what he threw. Valuev right, has landed a an absurdly small amount uh, percentage of what he has thrown. And you're right, we could be a minute and 14 seconds or so away from Vander Holyfield winning his fifth world title and being the oldest man to win a version of the heavyweight title and it will not feel as electric as it should because of the nature of this fight. And I think that's a fair statement to make. Yeah. Holyfield has rarely come forward, but Valuev doesn't win a single round on aggression. He is just following, following, following around the ring. Not letting his hands go, playing right into the hands of the 46-year-old Evander Holyfield. As we approach the half minute mark, it's clear. The champion needs that KO. Now, Evander Holyfield needs to get off those ropes. Because Valuev looked like he was trying to load up on a right hand, a rare, and he look at he's trying right now. Well, Vander looks like he's off balance and staggering around. He might times. be a little tired right now. And that makes him vulnerable, but Valuev doing not much. Maybe Valuev he's won this round. Run out of clock, and he's run out of title contention in my book a champion who let it go to an ex-champion a fascinatingly oh. dispassionate performance what is that by all about? and you hear the reaction to what he just did so that tells you that we're not the only people that saw it this way wow he didn't even show up. Man, this got to be a happy corner. I don't know what, what uh, Nikolai Valuev is thinking. Well, that's kind of a delusional move, isn't it? Yeah, Based and, upon his performance. Yeah, and a lot of people thought Holofield was the delusional <laughs> one taking this fight. Who would have thought? Um, now, having said all of what we've said and reaching the end of this match, <laughs> we now see it in the judges' hands. And the judges, again, from Sweden, Panama, and Italy, will determine whether Evander Holofield, this 46-year-old you're looking at, will become the oldest heavyweight champion in history. Winning a portion of the heavyweight championship, and... Um, Al, I say again, we were ringside in 2003 when Holofield couldn't get his hands out of his pocket and they threw in the towel against James Tony. And I remember we called the yeah. action and we sat there and said, this is the last time we're going to see him. That was five and a half years ago, five years ago. And he really hasn't beaten anyone with conviction since then. And now he's going to be the champion of the world the way I see it. You and I have been uh, ringside in a variety of uh, capacities. Yes. During most of the important moments in Evander Holyfield's career. And once again, we're calling what could turn out to be an important match for him. I would be shocked but in days. the electricity <laughs> about his achievement is not there for the most part because of the Valuev and because there just wasn't enough in that ring to create excitement tonight but nevertheless it would still be an, an achievement and uh, we could of course get yet another surprise if the judges somehow find a way to give this fight to Valuev yes the champion uh, Nikolai Valuev It's been eight years since that man held a portion of the heavyweight championship. As he said, I can't accept defeat. I'm not finished until I say I am. That look tells you what the supporters of Valuev think happened here. Will that version of reality be validated by the judges' scorecards? Well, a measure of appreciation 
for Vander Holyfield. Not necessarily for what he did in the ring tonight. Wasn't much, but it was more than this man did. Not exactly an ebullient uh, Evander yes. Holyfield either. I think it's fair to say, without overstating or trying to paint some uh, some inappropriate picture, he doesn't look like a man overjoyed with what happened in the ring. Happy, satisfied that maybe he thought he got the job done, but not overjoyed with the, the artistic creation of this prize fight. We're going to hear it from Michael Buffer now. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the scorecards, tonight here in Zurich, we have seen two sensational heavyweights in this ring. A round of applause for champion and challenger. We go to the scorecards. Guillermo Perez scores the bout 114-114 even. Wow. Pierluigi Pope. 116, 112. Mikael Hook, 115, 114 to the winner by a majority decision. And still, wow, this, WBA this is, heavyweight I am champion not only, of the world <laughs> from Russia with love, Nikolai Niko. shocked, dazed, and amazed. That's the worst officiating I have ever seen, in my opinion. And we've seen a lot of fights over the years, Al. I know I could be caught up in the moment, but how this man retained Ladies his title is beyond belief. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause That's pretty for the staggering. future Hall uh, you know, of Fame legend of boxing uh, this, this is you know, from Atlanta, Georgia, USA. Well, the, inter USA, and the interesting thing about Evander this is, Real. you know, as Evander Holyfield takes some adulation and has a puzzled look on his face. Oh, gee. One of the things that I think is is distressing about this is that it was not a, a brilliant entity as a fight, prize fight. And then you further diminish it by creating a decision that is, in my mind, something separate from reality. And Al, the worst thing, to, uh, again, from this big picture of boxing is yeah. Evander Holyfield's not going to quit now. He's going to say, I really beat this guy. I should be champion. I'm going to fight on. And again, I say he didn't do anything to threaten any bona fide world champion tonight that would suggest that he has the skills to really press and win a title again, uh, unless it's in a rematch against a sleepwalking Russian giant. And like I don't this. think, you see, you know, I don't think anybody in that crowd, yeah. What a close shave. <laughs> yeah. You said it all, Alfred. <laughs> yeah, who is absolutely <laughs> the case. Um, the fact of the matter is that I don't think anybody there really, uh, who could be objective, uh, thought Valuev actually won this fight. Yeah. And, and one of the most distressing situations you find yourself in, in, in broadcasting fights and doing fights of this nature, is when you've been forced to sit here and even if you qualify what you're doing, you're trying to find a way to not feel like, you know, we certainly didn't feel like we presented a one-sided picture in this uh, fight to people. Очень, and as they talked to Lua about his native language. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Was war für Sie dann im Laufe des Kampfes das Problem an den Mann ranzukommen, der ja sehr beweglich um Sie rumgelaufen ist? Sie haben hier auch ein bisschen gegen die Zuschauer oh. kämpfen müssen. Ist das auch für Sie ein Problem gewesen oder hatten Sie sich darauf eingestellt, dass eine Legende wie Holyfield hier natürlich viel Unterstützung hat? Well, as they can continue on with the interview, um, oh, well. nobody found it in their heart to give, <laughs> to give Holyfield a fight. And what's fascinating, what I, I guess, is the 116-112 score. So that, that to me, that's an Italian judge. That's an 8-4 win for, uh, for Belua. That means he won eight rounds of that, uh, of that fight. And the interesting thing is I'm not sure in, in a four or five round period he landed eight punches. That's one of the worst title fights I've ever seen, Al, and one of the most disgraceful um, decisions I've ever witnessed. And it'll be interesting to see the ramifications from this, both oh, in terms boy. of the quality of the fight and also, and here we go, there's the Vander Your great ambition. How disappointed are you? Well, you know, uh, 
you know, I can't be disappointed with uh, what I did in ring. I, I felt that I did the things that were necessary to to win, and uh, the judges, you know, they they scored they scored the fight, and so whatever they scored, that's what it was. So, but most important thing, I did the things that I felt that it needs to take to win. You were 14 months outside the ring. How did you feel tonight? I felt great. I felt great. Uh, I, I, I feel great. And the most important thing I did, uh, I feel great. You faced them all, Lewis, Foreman, Holmes, etc. How would you rate Nikolai Valuya? Well, you know, it's quite different. You know, he's, he's a big guy and uh, quite, you know, I know that he don't have much experience, but, you know, he's a big guy and, and facing someone seven foot, who 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 decent you know it's, it's difficult you know he's, he's a good fighter strong strong guy he was able to do the things that's necessary to not to get hit by a lot of punches and so you know uh, uh, pretty good fighter you studied well the uh, shagayev valuya fight but something was missing what was lacking tonight well i don't think anything was lacking that you know i i hit him more time than he hit me i felt and you know i uh, you know, I moved a lot and made him miss punches, and I fought the fight that that I would felt that was good for me to win. And that's it. That's the only thing you do is your best. Now you're 46. What's coming next? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna have to go home and uh, think about it and see uh, see what what what's next on the uh, the drawing board. The crowd wanted you to win. Did you did you recognize that uh, they gave some applause all the time to you during the fight? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that uh, the crowd were behind me. And first of all, I'd like to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for giving me strength to be able to do the things that were necessary to perform the way that I did tonight. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Evander thank Holyfield. You. Bye -bye. Very interesting, Al, that he was non-committal whether he'll fight on. And I think you can strip down this entire evening to one basic statement that Evander Holyfield made. I thought I hit him more times than he hit me. Absolutely. He didn't hit him that much. But he hit him more times than value I've hit him, and there isn't any question, shouldn't be any question in anybody's mind about that. And, and that is maybe the only single statement tonight that's the most salient and makes the most well, sense. I can make another one. Well, this yeah. man, Christmas came early, yeah, undeniably, for, sure. for Nikolai Valuev, who walks away still WBA heavyweight champion of the world, 46 year old Evander Holofield fails in his bid to win a portion of the heavyweight crown for the fifth time. Nikolai Valuev escapes with a majority decision victory over 46-year-old Evander Holyfield. For Al Bernstein, I'm Nick Charles. So long, everybody. Thanks for watching.